So I've taken this thing out of the clamps, and I, I should have brought in some of the brought in, should have brought the uh, the clamp calls over. I I got super super very very little a super small <laughs> amount infinitesimal amount of what you would call springback. Um, you can even you can even see the f holes. I think this one was the one that was so. Uh, pulled back, but these even stayed uh, where they where they were clamped at, and uh, I uh, this this brace here that has some cracks. Uh, actually, they're not cracks; they're they're my separation knife going following the grain into this instead of going underneath. Uh, I'm gonna pull this. I am going to make new. Getting this out of my way so we can see back here. I am going to make new braces, uh, like I explained before. These the, the grain run out on this one especially is really bad, and then this one since I cut into it, trying to get the grain was flatter, but you can see the way the grain's running here. It's still running, you know, uphill here. Um, but these braces, where they were, um, very. Uh, I mean, I could clamp that thing right back in there now. Uh, and what it, it's all, it's rocking in the middle, which uh, would only add extra support to the top. It's kind of pre preloading that. Um, this one's a little, a little more severe. I think that might have something to do with the fact that that the. Um, It was unglued farther back, came loose farther back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these braces, and I, I even held these things up side by side, and and the braces are they're exactly the same brace, the same shape, both braces. So I'm going to trace this one that's cleaner, and uh, out of some good wood. And I'm going to do is make it, I'm going to make them longer so they come back next to the neck block. Now this one originally ran into the neck block and this one originally uh, would have gone past it. So I'm going to do is move this one over a little bit. You can see the old glue line. I'm going to move it over this. Then I can put uh, a little block here on either side of the tail block and on either side of the neck block. Although I don't think this end is as critical because mo all the pressure is really down here. I have a lot more glue joint happening up here that will hold this. But uh, I probably will just make them long enough that I can go right next to the neck and the heel block on these. It moves their position slightly on this one. I'm talking about a quarter of an inch difference maybe on this end and a fuzz on the neck block and this one is exactly the same so anyway um, yeah I'm gonna make some braces match that I'm gonna glue some cleats here and here to hold it down so it's locked in I was like I said when I opened this thing up I was kind of surprised that these weren't run in underneath um, the kerf um, lining there so uh, I, I want to anchor that down so that um, even if the glue joint was to fail for some reason which uh, not likely especially if you have it clamped down here when there's you could put a lot of pressure on that and the probably what would happen is you'd have a brace failure before you had a um, you know glue separation anyway yeah that's what I'm going to do um, so I'm not going to capture any of that. It's uh, it's a matter of tracing a pattern onto another piece of wood, dance on and out, and then sanding it down to where it needs to be. And uh, and then I'll get this cleaned up inside here, and we'll get them glued in. Hello, hello. Dane's back here in the shop. 
Um, working on tone bars, and uh, I think I am really pretty much there. I might have just a fuzz more to do right right up in here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and and fess up. I had these I had these things crossed up. I got I was standing on the wrong side of the guitar and I started fitting this one to this side. Fortunately it was a lot taller than it needed to be. So and then I discovered that in the course of trying to sand these things in I was getting blisters on myself. So I want to build in some load. I'm not sure you can see this. You can probably see under there and under here when I shine the light like that, that there's, there's a bit of bow in, uh, in the bar and that's what I want. And uh, I started fitting the other one. Uh, it, was, it was kicked out like that and it fit the guitar here flat and then I had to taper the ends. Found out that it was a lot easier to uh, just keep the bar straight up and down and then I just uh, gave myself about a sixteenth of an inch line and I went to the length of that. Then sanding the ends in wasn't a huge problem. But, just so you can see it, I can push this down in and it just gives my my top some some preload, which I think is a good idea. Um, so, that, that bar fits really well. Um, and so, like I said, just Looks like I've got just a little bit up here to do yet. So because it's got, you know, that preload, and I just basically rock it up on this corner or this end of the bar, and all I've been doing is I'm going to try to move my hands around her. Oh, yeah, it doesn't work. So anyway, I'm just moving it back and forth right here and getting that sand. I've got 80 grit. I just put some spray spray adhesive on the paper so that uh, I didn't just spray it in the guitar. And then when you and I did actually have it over here at one point. It peels right up. It doesn't leave any residue. So this is what I've been doing. Isn't that just loads of fun? I got a slight little, you can see a little clean spot right there, and I've still got a pencil line here that isn't really coming off. And I, when you shove that all the way down, it's just slightly gapped right there. So I got to take a little tiny bit right off of here. And I've been using my, I got a little palm plane here. So I just kind of want to ramp and I'm not I'm not taking much off at a time. Uh, it's just very very light. the case on my on my band so I can't see it I don't think so it's getting better and better so I'm not going to bore you with uh, any of that any more of that um, I can get both these bars fit and then glued in and uh, I may bring you back for a little of that, but we'll see what happens. Let's see. Um, oh, the piano, the piano uh, soundboard that I told you about that had the the uh, bars on it. Wait, tone bars or braces, whatever you want to call them. They were not big enough. Well, I only had two off. One of them was actually, you know, 
quarter saw and, and but it wasn't wide enough to cut both of these braces out of so I ended up um, the back of the piano had these great big chunks uh, in it and as you can see I'm hoping you can see this uh, we have it, this is actually the middle of the tree right here this bullseye but this is quarter sawn. If you cut it like that and stand this on edge, then that's quarter sawn. So that's what I did. I cut a chunk out. Um, unfortunately, a lot of it was had cracks in it and it was kind of shattered. And so uh, it was tough. Um, I cut up a big piece of wood and I got <laughs> basically this one usable part piece out of it. And, uh, and I got this out of it as a little tiny knot in the middle of it putting that on the treble side and then I had a little knot here as well and uh, some of that if not all of it is going to get carved out when I fit this brace so uh, but they're both vertical they're wider than the old ones were so that's what I'm going back in with uh, so miles ahead of uh, what this was so I got this brace clue glued in yesterday afternoon and uh, as you can see I have uh, not only end clamps here to hold the ends down but um, I had very very slight gaps here and there and I just wanted to bring them together not uh, not to fit the brace to the guitar so much as to fit the guitar to the brace because the brace contour was good and I know that we had a little wobble here in the guitar, so pulled it up like that. Anyway, so I'm just going to start taking this thing apart. Uh, shouldn't be anything terribly crazy happening here. I was uh, I was moving this thing yesterday. Just grabbed it to move it, and I actually pulled. Um, I tweaked that top right. The side right there and it actually cracked this joint right along the, the waist so I'll have to be um, cleaning that up to some degree and, and uh, gluing that back I'm not sure with this resin glue what what will uh, you know help that adhere uh, they say that high glue hot high glue uh, sticks to anything so I may just heat that up and uh, try to get some hot high glue in there and just Take it back together. I could just clamp it and run some CA in there, I suppose. Anyway, uh, I'll think about that. Maybe do a little research because of this type of glue that I'm not real sure about. And uh, see what happens. Anyway, I was obviously a little careless the way I grabbed that because now I have something to fix that I didn't need to fix before. So that's kind of a drag. Uh, and I used, uh, oh, and I left my blue bottle uh, open. I'll leave it open still because I'm going to use it again. Um, I put a uh, I put a C clamp on this uh, or G clamp for you guys across the pond uh, on this uh, F hole because it wasn't lining up. And I'm trying to remember when I first got this thing in. I am actually sure it was this one that was not lining up. And now it's actually lined up quite well. This one's kind of rolled down a little bit. I don't know if that was from the steam or if it was always like that. I just don't recall. Anyway. Um, so, this was this was pretty far off on this little this side over here. So I was just trying to pull it back together and uh, kind of even that up. It's... I thought maybe that as the top went down, if I had it clamped where I wanted it, that that would help hold it. Um, 
it's a little off still but it's not as far off as this side so when I clamp that side in I'm going to do the same thing um, try to pull that try to pull that together or up higher I don't know that it really matters but I was, why not you're here tweaking all this stuff around, may as well give it a whirl. That should work right there. that pulled in there. Reminding myself which side. This is the, the loose side. I just put the uh, the first one of this up where I was doing the inspection and uh, looking inside for the first time and seeing these braces uh, come loose and so uh, I mentioned to somebody in a comment actually I think it might gosh, it might have been Gert I didn't understand why that originally in the factory no maybe it was Randy anyway why originally in the factory when they assembled these, they didn't just run the braces on underneath the um, the kerfing. And I still don't know. Or like I'm going to do, not not a block this size, but just cut a little block and just glue it down right on top of that uh, after they're all in. I don't know why they didn't do something like that to help reinforce this. Uh, these old arch tops tend to do that, tend to pop loose like that. Anyway. go for this. I didn't do any clamp um, testing to see because I basically just did all that on the other one. Just turned my heater on when I came out here so everything's about 52 degrees out here right now it'll warm up a little bit as I go but you're probably hearing that in the background I just watched um, I watched it after it was actually live the Robbie O'Brien with some uh, sharpening uh, an hour plus long I didn't get to finish it. I decided I needed to get some work done. Um, but very, very interesting, very helpful guide to sharpening chisels and planes. Uh, if you don't know who Robbie O'Brien is, you need to check him out. He's a very, very good guitar builder in uh, Colorado. And I've been watching him ever since I've been doing this sort of work. Very, very knowledgeable builder, Robbie is.
Oh, it was a live stream. I probably should have mentioned that. Or maybe I did. Anyway, yeah, live stream. He had his whole family helping him out. That was kind of cool. For some reason, this one up here wants to pull this block over sideways, so that's why I had, a, had an extra clamp in here. Just to keep that all straight. And that one's very good. I'm getting good squeeze out. I probably don't have the camera placed very well for this. Getting good squeeze out all the way along here. I got a little bit of a gap where the body's hanging down right there. And then that's actually very good right there. Okay, so I'm going to do, I've got pads on these, so I don't worry too much about them. I used the big, big nasty clamp on the other side because I forgot I had these. And, uh, and that's part of the reason it was so heavy when I tried to move it. about three guitar builders in Colorado I wouldn't mind dropping in on. Oh, four now that I found out where he was. There's, uh, there's Robbie O'Brien. There is um, the guys, Matt and Chris at Texas Toast. There's Chris, I don't know what's his, I, don't, I can't think of what his last name is, but he's the uh, Highline guitar guy. And then there's uh, uh, Bo Hannon, Han Hammond, Hannon, yeah, Bo Hannon, I believe, guitars. He's in, uh, uh, gosh, he's on the other side. But anyway, the first, uh, I'll think of it. Junction. What's the what's the junction in Colorado? Something junction. Anyway, he's he's there. Bo and then uh, Chris and Matt and then Chris and Highline are in Denverish area, Denver. And then I'm Robbie is in a little town northeast, and I'm not sure what that's named, what that's called, but I remember seeing that at some point. Anyway, all those guys would be interesting to sit and chat and visit with if I ever get an opportunity. And uh, I'm going to be retired in a few years, and I might just make an opportunity happen. Grand Junction, Colorado. I knew there was a junction of some sort there. All right, so I'm going to just move this over a little bit because it's rocking back. So I am uh, I'm glued up. Now, I've got... I want to squeeze out on that side, but I don't have a lot on this side. I'm going to move this clamp up like that. I'm going to move this clamp over. it. 
Okay. Now I'm going to close my glue bottle up. Uh, you couldn't actually see anything I was doing. Let's try uh, moving this around. I like to just use these uh, popsicle sticks ground off on an angle on either edge and then I just go back like right here, lots of squeeze out. I'll just cruise along there and scrape that up. Uh, I'm going to need a new paper towel. Anyway, it allows me to get in and, and get, squeeze out where you just went after that with a rag, you might have some trouble getting into it. Anyway, right there. And I have the other end that's beveled the other way, so I'm going to go along the side of the brace and get that off. You saw the rest of the inside of this guitar, so um, any attempt that I'm making at removing squeeze out is way more than anybody did originally. Not that um, I wouldn't do it. I was just kind of amazed that they didn't. I just read some stuff though on this. They, these things sold originally for $40. Of course that was in 63 I believe I was reading about. This is 61 so maybe it was even less. The um, Uh, they go for a, a, one of these in good shape goes for about 300 bucks on reverb or you know used around different places uh, I saw one last night somewhere for 140 it was hard to tell in the picture it might have been a little rougher than this one is but when I was talking to my customer about this one he you know the cost of the repairs were going to be uh, you know more than more than the guitar well or about this I was going to charge him three hundred dollars it would have been a loss on my end but I, I like to keep old guitars going but he uh, I probably mentioned this in a previous video he, uh, he gave it to me so that I could do what I wanted with it and I thought it would be a nice experiment And it's something I would I would recommend to those of you who are maybe not um, would like to get more experience in uh, in guitar repair. Certainly, don't go out and get a you know don't work on your your valuable your valuable instruments. Decide that you're going to learn how to how to repair guitars and try to pull the back off of something. Now I got my... Anyway, and uh, something like this would come along, you know, be a, a pretty, pretty good uh, opportunity.